Hello everyone. Today I like to uh, maybe try to explain one of the anomalous observations where I tried to double a number and uh, a weird thing happened as part of a discussion of different variable types and uh, connected to arithmetic functions. So how different variable types react to different arithmetic uh, uh, operations. So I'm going to start my um, this particular thing by writing a program called uh, arithmetics that Python. So in here, what I want to do is first, uh, you know, use this to get a few numbers: a equals to ten, b equals to twenty, x equals to three point eight, y equals to negative four point two. And here, of course, I can just say print the entire sequence of a, b, x, y. Let's stop, execute this. So at this point, my program does nothing more than just establish four variables. Two are implicitly defined to be of type integers. A and B, two X and Y are defined as implicitly defined as real type 3.8 and negative 4.2. And when I print them, I just get those four numbers back onto my, my screen. So there are a variety of things you can do at this point. You can say A times B. Um, you can print A divided by B. You can multiply uh, X by um, a. So there are certain rules that one can use in order to govern this. Float is a higher data type than integer, so if a uh, float multiplied by integer always will return an in, a, a float uh, result. So there are a variety of um, rules in here that under some circumstances is going to cause uh, anomalous behavior. So for now, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to push forward with just simple things, basic things, and anomalous events as they occur, we will address them later. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to run them just to see if they are all operating as expected. So A, A times B is 10 times 20 is 200. And it's an integer multiplied by integer. It gives me an integer. Therefore, I have an integer output. A divided by B, 10 divided by 20, an integer divided by an integer. In different programming languages, this, is, this would have been evaluated differently and potentially could have resulted zero. But in this particular case, Python is smart enough that a division of whole numbers may result a float and therefore performs the appropriate conversion, divides 10 by 20 and produces an output of 0.5. And then x times a, a float multiplied by integer based on a certain set of rules is going to produce a float. So 3.8 times 10 is going to be 38.0. So everything is um, perfectly fine so far. Now, the thing to make a distinction at this point is that if I say print 2 plus 2, I will receive the result of this thing is actually an arithmetic operation that adds the number two to number two and will produce a re result would be a four. However, if I type this thing in a peculiar fashion, so in here, again, I am performing the same operation of two plus two, the result is going to be slightly different. So if I was to execute this, save it and then execute it. So you see that the first instance of two plus two is going to produce the value, the, the numerical value of four. Whereas if I say, two plus two, where each of the twos are embedded within uh, the double quote, the behavior becomes different. And two plus two will produce the output of 22. And the primary distinction between, uh, in this particular instance, 
is in the first instance of 2 plus 2, the, val the numbers 2 that are listed here are actually numerical values 2, whereas in the second instance, they are, they are characters 2, they are a string. And therefore, under when you're performing numerical oper when you're performing addition using numbers as your operand, then your interpreter, and this is basically true in many modern languages, your operand is uh, is smart. Your your programming language is smart enough to know you want to perform arithmetic operation, which will be two plus two, provide the uh, answer of four. However, when you're working with strings or characters, then characters, um, when they are performed, uh, um, when you perform an addition operator on strings or characters, the interpretation there would be concatenation of the two. So therefore, when you're performing two plus two in a second instance right here, uh, when you're performing the addition, the addition is not a numerical arithmetic operation. It's more of a string operation that concatenates two and two and produces um, to, that produces two. Uh, sorry, twenty-two. So, in a similar fashion, if you were to say two uh, times two, let me space separate them so they are easy to read. Uh, 2 times 2, so multiplication of strings will essentially be replication of the string given two times. So, for example, if I had to make this a little bit more easier to comprehend, so if I was to do this, you can see 234 has been replicated twice. If I was to make this to be four, the same thing, 234 would have been replicated four times. So this is a quick way, uh, th this is useful a variety of times when you're performing operation on string data types for to, to perform useful features, uh, useful functions. Now, this is the basis of the anomaly that we observed last time. So this is one piece of information to hang on to. Now, I am going to uh, continue this process. So let's say C equals, I'm going to give something from the user. And at this point, when execution program execution arrives at this particular line, at line 16, you can uh, at this point execution is going to um, prompt the user by echoing, please enter a number to double, stops, waits for something to be entered. You enter, and the whole premise in here is that I want to perform the following and print double the number. So if I was to execute this, um, so give me, for example, 354. And you can see it's 354 repeated twice. So at this point, based on the information that I have given you, you can probably ascertain what is the problem or what exactly phenomenon is taking place in here. And generally what happens, the input function, whatever is receiving from this from the command prompt from the keyboard essentially treating that as a plain string of characters not numbers it's just however so um, it's just whatever type in is going to take that and it's going to stick that into c and then c is going to be a string and it's just going to be duplicated because I'm just multiplying it by two. And that's the phenomenon that's at work. Um, so I hope that clarifies that anomalous behavior that we observed last time. So now the question is, if I want to actually perform this function, if I want the user to actually give me a number and I double it, <clears throat> then what do I do? So you have some choices, although with these tool sets that I'm showing you, you don't have the most flexible approach, but you have something you can do. 
So for example, let's start over. Let me say C. Incidentally, if you need it to comment anything out in Python is a hashtag, pound sign, um, however, whatever you call this, those would be um, commented out. Here, I'm going to say C equals to um, 23. I'm going to print C. This <clears throat> so you can see, okay, actually let's do this, and I'm going to get 2 times C. I'm going to say C equals to 1st instance, because the number was defined as a numerical value, therefore 23 and 23 multiplied by 2 should produce 23 and 46 as they did here. And in the second instance of definition of C, C is defined as a string and therefore C and double C would produce 23 and 23, 23. Now the question is at this point, can I receive a character string like this and convert it to a numerical entity, which then I can perform arithmetic operations. Or vice versa, can I somehow take a number and take this number and convert it to a string, which then I can perform string manipulation on it? Okay, so um, basically, let me recap again to get myself kind of get back into the game here. So, um, Let me see what was I doing. Okay, so in these two instances, in one case, C is 23, numerical value, integer, and then the other one is a string that contains the characters 2 and 3. And a transition from line 19 to line 22, uh, basically Python performs an implicit typecasting that where C in line 19 was an integer, C on line 22 is assigned a value that seems to be string. From that point forward, C will become a string type and it will proceed um, as a string. So therefore, if you double it, it'll just replicate itself. So this part is something called that's implicit typecasting and conversion of types. But what I want to do, I want to do an explicit one. I want, as a programmer, I want to force my program to be something. So at that case, I can take uh, I, and you can do this at various uh, stages of programming. So here I can take the, the string 23 and force it to become an integer by invoking a command called int. You can do this with int, with all the primitive types, int, float, and complex. We haven't looked at complex at this point, but you can convert this number, the string that contains 23, if you want, you can convert it to, a, um, to an integer or you can convert it to a float. So if you were to now rerun the same program that before numerical value of 23 was converted as a numerical value, then when I printed it, double it was 46. The string 23 was then became 23 when printed and then when I doubled it became 23, 23. Now, after explicit conversion of the string 23 to an int, should behave like an int. So I can do, I could have done this to be a float, in which case the result would have been a float. I could have done a com complex. Uh, and from here, there are a number of other libraries you can include in your, you can import and include in your program to do even more sophisticated I'm a popular person today. Uh, more sophisticated conversion and extraction of information from strings into numbers or from numbers to strings. Generally, converting a number into a string is a lot simpler than conversion extraction of numbers out of a string. So for example, I can always take a number and convert it to a string of characters. However, 
something like this is much harder to do. And of course, at this point, there's going to be an exception, an error uh, introduced saying that I have no idea what you want me to do. There's characters in there that I don't know how to process. So this particular casting, explicit casting from string to numbers works under very simplistic conditions. So knowing this now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to transplant these two parts um, at the end of my program, knowing that input function returns an, uh, a string, but I really want it to be converted to an integer. So I can embed the entities that are returned as part of whatever information of return power of input and explicitly convert it to a string, to, I'm sorry, to an integer, and then um, operate accordingly. Uh, C equals to something. That's interesting. Keys and turn. That should work. Please enter a number. Okay, so I don't think you really see the error there. Let's uh, do this in a different way. Let me see if this works on its own. Um, oh. <laughs> I see. So you may notice that things are not working, I think only because this other extra space here. Let me give it a try. Yes. So that was the problem. So as I mentioned before, you know, accidental indentation of things can be very problematic. Python, be aware of it, but once uh, those kinds of issues are usually identified easier within an um, IDE programming environment. So at this point, where before, before just the string that was uh, the number that was entered would have been replicated. In this particular case, I can give it a number um, 345, and it will be doubled. So I can perform this conversion. The thing is that ahead of time, the type of number that you want to receive needs to be known, whether it's an integer or float. If you do not know it, then of course, float is more inclusive. With float, you can give integers or floating point numbers and everything will work. So this is basically the general concept of um, text, very simple text strings and arithmetic functions. And the point is that arithmetic functions, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, they work as expected with numerical values. They have, they still have some functionality when they're applied to strings. When it is clear what they should do, the functionality is there. When it is unclear what they should do, then maybe, for example, they will not work. For instance, in this particular case, I'm going to return this back to, um, to just being a string. Here, multiplication makes sense. And let me also do this. Like, so C plus C makes sense. All it is is concatenation. Therefore, multiplication makes sense. Multiplication is nothing more than repeated addition. However, it will not make sense to divide a text by two. And when you do this, you will get some sort of a error saying, that I don't know how to divide this string by two. So not all operators work for all data types. So you need to be aware of it. And so you can use the input function by explicitly forcing it to be a number. You can actually convert your input values to numbers and proceed forward. Now, what I want to do next time is I want to, con I want to look at strings explicitly and, um, and work with strings, which basically by its very nature is going to force me to go to for loops and if uh, statements. That's fine. 
So if this is going to be the last time we're going to look at numbers, or at least the arithmetic operations, let me just um, say a few things here. I will go up here as part of my exercise, my ex um, what other operations there are. So there is, uh, for example, x, uh, let's say hmm, a to the power of 2. This is a use for, useful operation to perform. So to this, this um, asterisk, asterisk, two asterisks repeated in a row is to the power of. So a to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 2 will produce 100. And there is modulus, there is uh, there are a variety of other things that one could, um, I, I don't think, that, I'm just going to stop at this point. I think these are some of the basic arithmetic operations that would be useful. You can always extend mathematical functions by performing, for example, absolute value. You can perform rounding of numbers to a certain uh, decimal place. Um, so a number of other ones, I'm going to use those, I'm going to introduce those as, um, as, as needed, but at this point I'm going to stop with just basic these. So next time I'm going to start with uh, strings and discuss some of the features, how you would traverse strings, how you would extract portion of it, how you would just uh, look at character by character at a time to examine to see what it is. So thank you and I'll talk to you soon.